Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales of Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Humble merchants written by something touches back. We are but humble merchants, the human said as he poured a deep blue liquid from an unlabeled crystal canter in two small cups. Major Zykon raised a proper cup to his lips and savored his unusual, yet perplexingly familiar taste. Where had he had this before? Major Zykon pondered this as he looked beyond Director Johnson to the view of the human trading complex beyond. Humans had come to his world, Umdar, ten years earlier, and built their trading post in an alpine valley strategically centered at the intersection between three of Omdar's wealthiest governing districts. The trading post itself was built, according to Director Johnson, to resemble a pre-industrial alpine village in a place one growth called Bavaria, and it was, to Major Zykom's eyes, extraordinarily beautiful. Sadly, the view out the window was marred by a new array of very tall metal grid towers that were holding up an expanding network of horizontal cables covering the entire valley, right up to the ridge tops. The purpose of this new construction was totally lost on the Major. No Amdara knew exactly how large the human sphere of influence was, or how many planets these humble merchants traded with. But strolling the myriad of shops, the Amdari could find the most extraordinary tools, home appliances, food, and fabrics surely gathered from a large swath of the galaxy. But Major Zykom had yet to admit that that can't be found in any shop or street or human spacecraft or in Amdari space was a lethal weapon. The human police in the trading post used non-lethal weapons, and no other human was armed at all. The director seemed to believe that bringing lethal weapons to Amdari territory would be threatening and a hindrance to free trade. But Major Zykom wasn't here to talk about trade. The Major took another sip of the deep blue liquid and said, As I said before, our scouts indicate a substantial Grandin invasion fleet is thirty days out. If humans do not have resources to help us, then I suggest you evacuate. I cannot guarantee the Amdari will be able to hold off this fleet, and the Grandin are known to collect slaves from conquered worlds. Director Johnson sipped from his cup refilled both cups and said, Oh, we have faith in the Umdari. You will keep your planet. More is more than just who has the biggest ships, the strongest weapons, or the most troops after all. More is also about information. More is also about understanding your adversary. Tell me, Major, have you ever met a Grundon? Once. I was part of an expeditionary fleet that ran to Grundon scouting group near the Zant system. We captured the ship and, uh, that's where I've had this before. This, holding his glass, is Grundon Smetch. Pushing back from the table, Major Zykom said, you humans are trading with the Grundon. Well, not exactly trading. This particular Smetch was liberated from Admiral Back's personal yacht. Do you know the Admiral Back? He's quite famous on Grund. At least, according to the mementos in his cabin. In any case, he's the dude the Grundons picked to head up their invasion fleet. Director Johnson filled their glass again. Major Zykon moved back to the table and took another sip. The already excellent Svetch, definitely improving with more Svetch. Especially knowing that it had been liberated. Okay, you have my attention. How did you acquire Admiral Back's yacht? With what else do you know about the pending invasion? We've had stealth observers around Grunt for, well, uh, let us say uh, a while now. We haven't contacted them yet because they are, as you indicated, somewhat unpleasant to those who are not Grundons. We watched with great interest as they assembled an impressive fleet of combat ships and dropship carriers and an equally impressive fleet of supply ships. Clearly, they were building for an evasion somewhere. As unpleasant as they are, we are not at war with them and didn't feel it was appropriate to tangle with the combat fleet. So we followed the supply fleet instead. They were following a pattern of making faster-than-light jumps to rendezvous points, 
getting reorganized and then jumping to the next rendezvous point. At the one such point, a very nice ship, which turned out to be the General's yacht, developed a particularly hard-to-isolate problem with its FTL drive and was unable to jump with the rest of the fleet. Mind you, uh, we were but humble merchants, and surely nobody would believe that we could send a robot into the center of fleet formation, remove a critical part, and get back to completely undetected. The missing part must have been a pure coincidence. I think I would believe you could, said the Major Zyko. Well, then, you have a better imagination than the Grundons. They just left the yacht behind for us to salvage at our leisure. Director Johnson took another sip. It was a good salvage. In addition to the Admiral's personal stash of booze, we also got an inside look at Grundon computing and communications equipment, including all of their encryption methods and keys. The Admiral apparently likes to use his yacht as a command and control center. So it had all the best military stuff. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Our people really enjoyed poking through it. Oh, and we've also explored his personal quarters. Do you know the Admiral got his big break when he was a major, just like you? Yes. They were attacking a planet, and it was not going well. Then Major Buck came up with an idea of focusing their attack on a single strip mine that was conveniently located near critical cities. You see, the right kinds of strip mines offer a broad, hard surface for ships to land, change out their air, and deploy their planetary hardware. This meant that they were able to get on the ground and get organized without having to drop ships all shot up and spread out everywhere. The strategy worked, and Major Back became, eventually, Admiral Buck. He wrote a book of all about it. Director Johnson then reached behind him and brought out the Admiral's textbook on Grundon tactics. Majors can be innovative, but Admirals tend to do what worked before. The Admiral's scout ships will be snooping around next week. Please pretend you don't see it. I'm sure that the Admiral will be delighted to find a convenient flat strip mine equidistant between all your three largest cities. Major Zycom looked out the window at the ugly towers and cables. Am I to understand that you're covering your entire valley with camouflage net to make it look like flat ground? Well, uh, not a net. Also reflectors and radar transponders to fool their altimeters. And, of course, we'll mess with their navigation systems, jam their communications, and assert our own false communications so the first ships don't warn the other ships behind them. Director Johnson smiled, his eyes glistening with pleasure. An entire fleet of warships crashing into our little valley, one after the other. We anticipate making a fortune on salvage. We are, after all, just humble merchants. End of story. Story number two. Rifle Rounds, written by Monarch357. What in the feck is wrong with you? A tall avian going by color asked an expression of utter bewilderment spreading across her face. Hearing about human armaments was astounding enough, but seeing one in person... What? It's only a fifty. Half of the crap in our armory runs off bigger rounds, Alexander retorted, clearly on the defensive. Don't you use plasma and laser weaponry? Yes, we do. Uh, for the anti-armor cannons, the bullet is the size of a talon. No matter how much the human explained, Carla would never understand their obsession with almost comically large ballistic ordnance. Have you ever seen what a .50 BMG does to a sapient? It's beautiful. Fine, show me then. I want to see what this affront to the gods can do in combat. Alex pulled up videos he recorded of his own experimentation with the Goliath Mark V AMR on his own time. Three shots against three ballistic dummies in three places. By the first clip's end, Carla was slightly red-faced, and by the conclusion of the compilation, she could barely stand upright. So what do you think? Alex asked in an oddly casual tone, seemingly completely unaffected by the gruesome minute and a half recording he so proudly displayed. Carla began a few noises that Alex's translator interpreted as confused stuttering. He could be heard without its rapid chirping, what in the feck is that rifle? Fecking destroy it before it takes out the building. What? 
You don't like it? Well, how the feck could you tell? No, I don't fecking like it. Why in the hell did you make me watch that? Hey, this is one of my favorite guns. I thought you'd like it too. That fecking target got turned into gelatin mist. The third one lost its entire head. What the feck do you do against an actual organism? Uh, not much. Just powderizes half of its skeleton on a lucky shot. No big deal. What? Oh, yeah, we used to make fully automatic versions of this. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just like to give a quick thanks to the T5 channel members and patrons. Alithia, Parky, Feudic Yol, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Angry Marine, Lord Azrakal, and White Van 420